So now in my last video, I introduced most of the main components, the basic components you use in electronics, and demonstrated how they work. In this video, we're going to go more into studying electronics, and you're going to learn uh, other principles too. So, in any case, when we have a circuit that we're either going to build or study or whatever, normally it's in schematic form. Of course, I do videos, and so I can show you the components directly and stuff and how they work. But normally you'll be reading about electronics while you're learning them, and you're going to have to understand schematics. So this is one way to draw the schematic for this circuit. I have the 5 volts on top here. Normally, in direct current, the positive voltage is the number. So we consider 5 volts at the uh, positive rail and 0 volts the ground at the negative rail. So we indicate that the other side of the circuit is the ground, the 0 volt point, and these components are in series. So we got the power source on the positive side, one side of the switch, the other side of the switch comes to a resistor, that part of the resistor, or the other side of the resistor I should say, comes to the anode of the LED, this is the LED schematic symbol, and this side's the anode, this side's the cathode, long lead, short lead. And so the cathode, the short lead, comes to ground there. And that's how you read a schematic when it's up and down like this. Also, the ground may be a triangle symbol, but I don't really see that. So now, here's another really common way that you draw a circuit. And so, we have a battery symbol there. And battery symbols are just different linked dashes here. And these dashes may indicate how many cells there are. Often this means two cells for a battery. Three cells would have another long dash, short dash. But normally you just have the two, and all that indicates is a battery. And for the rest of the circuit, it doesn't matter what powers it. Just what the voltage is, and if it can provide enough current. I'm using a power supply, which can uh, provide plenty of current for this circuit, as could a battery. It doesn't really matter. So... This is basically a 5 volt battery symbol, but it doesn't matter if you substitute it for uh, most cases, unless you're building something that somebody gave you the parts for or something. But in any case, we have the positive side of the battery comes to the switch. You can see that there. The other side of the switch here comes to one side of the resistor. Other side of the resistor comes to the anode of the LED. And the cathode, the short lead of the LED, comes to the negative side of the power source or you could call it ground if you want and remember the long lead of the LED is the anode the short lead is the cathode when you haven't cut the lead yet and also there's a flat edge on the cathode side if you had cut it or you could test it with the multimeter we've looked at that in another video maybe I'll do that again in this video but in any case it could be square like this and also these two points may not end in the same spot right here. You may have a ground symbol there and the LED may come down here with the ground symbol there. That just indicates those two points connect. Usually use that when you have a whole bunch of areas that go back to ground. You don't want to draw the lines back. You just uh, draw ground symbols on all of them. And here's another common way you may see a circuit drawn in schematic form. This is generally the one I use because it fits on these diagrams really well. And I can write above and below it as uh, we'll see later on. But uh, we got the 5 volt at the positive rail. Remember we're considering the negative ground. So we don't have a voltage written here. That indicates 0 volts. Sometimes you'll see a dash for negative. But uh, with no number next to it that indicates 0 volts. Or you still may see the ground symbol with uh, this case. In fact, that'll probably be more common. But in any case, again, the components are connected in series. And what that means when I say they're connected in series is that the current has to enter one side and come out of each of these components. And so the current's going to be the same in this circuit, the same through all three components, including the power source, because it has to be a continuous path between all three of them. 
and so that's one important thing to remember in series circuits is that the currents can be the same through all of them so if you measure the current at any point in there it will be the same so now moving along I've been using this switch to indicate the uh, switch here and this is actually a single pull single throw switch you can see it starts at one point and it either opens and closes at only one point now the actual push button switch schematic symbol looks like this but as I said with the battery you don't have to use a battery just because the battery is shown as the power source you can substitute it with any other power source as long as it can provide enough current and stuff but uh, same with the switches you don't have to use the exact same type of switch they show in the schematic the circuit doesn't care what the switch is it's only whether it's open or close and so you could use a regular switch or a push button switch and so that doesn't matter so even though I'm using a push button switch I usually use this switch for the schematic symbol because that's more common now one other thing I need to mention about all these schematics is they don't tell you how these will be arranged in physical order and what I mean is that the schematic just tells you what you connect everything to so in this case we connect one side of the switch to the positive side of the power source you can see it there but in the diagram here you see the power source the positive side is to the left of the switch whereas on the breadboard I have the power source to the right I could have a jumper from here but and you'll probably see that a lot when people do breadboards but these uh, this breadboard and the jumpers that I got they they fit nicely right here I have these orange jumpers that come right there to that first hole and these gray jumpers when you put them into the negative rail there they come right to that hole and so no matter what the schematic symbol shows I generally wire things on this side of the board here on the right side both the positive and negative but like here you see the power source is on the left side so the schematic doesn't tell you how to wire things other than where they connect you can arrange them however you want it's just these connections that are important and that's what the schematic symbol is telling you you have to connect this side of the switch to the positive and then this side of the switch to the resistor to one side of the resistor and then the other side of the resistor it doesn't have polarity doesn't matter which side is which neither is the switch but the other side of the resistor from the switch has to connect to the anode of the LED the LED is a semiconductor it's important which direction it's connected and that's why it's very clear here you have a dash here for the cathode this side of the triangle for the anode and it looks like an arrow to tell you that positive current flows this way through it and then arrows to show that it emits light and so the LED has to be uh, connected in the right direction compared to the resistor in this case and the uh, negative side of the power source but it doesn't matter how you arrange it physically just so long as the long leads next to the resistor and the short lead comes to the negative rail wherever that may be in real life and so now last thing I'm going to mention in this video is that a lot of countries they don't use the jagged lines for a resistor they use a rectangle now I don't really see this much I see it once in a while when I look up schematics online but it's really rare generally I only see the jagged lines and the value written on top but instead of the jagged lines you may see a rectangle and also in those schematics you won't see the jagged lines so it's pretty clear it's it's a resistor because that's one of the main components pretty much every circuit will have a resistor and so if you see a bunch of rectangles but no jagged lines those are resistors also they write the value inside the schematic symbol here instead of on top of it and one other thing to note is they don't use a decimal point when they give the value so let's say it's a 1.5 kilo ohm resistor 1500 ohms it won't say 1.5 K it'll say 1 K 5 and that's because a lot of times the decimal point doesn't show up well on schematics and stuff and so they just 
use the K for kila or M for mega, whatever, as the decimal point spot. So you'll just know if it says 1K5, that's 1.5 kilo ohms.